أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Very respected brothers and sisters in Islam. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Every Friday, I see all of my brothers and sisters here in the mosque, and we are happy. We are very, very happy to see each other. This is just a reminder of the announcement I have made many, many times in the past few months. This house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala providing the best, best tool, best Islamic education for our Christian community. And alhamdulillah, this is a good news I would like to share with you. Our Madina school, which is the one and first girls only high school, has fulfilled its need for our community. And this year, we have so many, so many parents and children attracted to this school and we have filled out all of our classes. Takbir! Takbir! So this is a good news, news by spreading the good word with the community, with the brother and sister and every time I come here to remind you. The second thing is our Islamic Sunday school which is only one day every Sunday the school will be starting and Alhamdulillah every year we have 200 plus children our youngster come and joining this school. And this school is also starting this Sunday. This Sunday, inshallah, 9.45 in person. So those brothers, they have young children, please come and join our 
regular school or Islamic Sunday school, inshallah. Today is our Sheikh Shafiq Alhamdulillah is here. He's going to be leading, leading us for our khatib as a Jumat of prayer. One more thing I would like to remind you over and over again. This is all of us responsibility to keeping this house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beautiful. It's clean as much as we can. We have sometimes a lot of complaints coming from the neighborhood by parking illegally, blacking the driveway, not realizing this is not a parking is started. Please, please, please help us. Keep our reputation up and let the neighbor be happy with our appearance. So that will affect. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa All thanks and praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, we glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek His mercy, His blessings, and we beg for His forgiveness. I testify to the absolute fact that there is no deity, no one worthy of any deification except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
for he's indeed alone and has no partners and whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, none can lead astray, and whomsoever he left astray, none can provide guidance to. And I further attest to the fact that Muhammad ibn Abdullah Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is indeed the last and final messenger. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالِمِينَ He was sent as a mercy, as a compassion, as a benefactor, as an intercessor to all of creation, to Yawm Al-Qiyamah. يا أيها المسلمين يا عباد الله قال الله تعالى في الكتاب الكريم عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وجاءت السكرة المض بالحق ذلك ما كنت منه تحيد صدق الله العظيم قال الله تعالى في الكتاب الكريم عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وأخذ ربك من بني آدم Zuhurihim Duriyatahum Sadaq Allahul Azim My dear beloved brothers and sisters in Islam If you should ask the academian If you should ask the historian Which of the story in human history Is the most profound and believable story And you can google this By one of the five most prominent historian He was asked and he says the most believable story in human history is the story of the money. That everyone believed in the dollar. Nobody has any doubt, nobody don't, that have no mistrust with the dollar, in God we trust, is the story of money. That you can take a dollar to the Amazon jungle and have a transaction with no problems. But undoubtedly, if you ask them also to define this insan, define this human being, if you go to MIT and ask one of the probably most brilliant minds to define what this insan is, they will say this human being is a bunch of amino acid and protein come together and they come after a while it forms you and then it becomes into an ape and then you evolve. That's their worldview. But let's look at what is the most important story in human history. It is the story of the creation of this insan. It's the story of the creation of this human being. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins to tell us in Surah Al-Mu'minun, the 23rd chapter of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala interestingly begins this surah to define not the worldview of success, that if you ask, or many of you would say, my son is very successful. He has a PhD from MIT. He just discovered his drugs and they go to launch it. He's very successful. He lived in certain zip code. He has this car. That is our worthy of success. But we never say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bless him with a child that is successful. Zakaria did not say to Allah, bless me with a child that is successful. Ibrahim never said to Allah, bless me with a son that is successful. He says, Rabbi hadni min as Zakaria said the same thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in the pages of the Quran that you and I said the same thing to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, huwa alladhi khalakakum min nafsin wahida wa ja'ala minha zawjaha. لِيَسْكُنَ إِلَيْهَا فَلَمَّا تَغَشَّاهَا حَمْلًا حَمْلًا خَفِيفًا فَمَرَّتْ بِي فَلَمَّا أَثْقَالَ الدَّعْوَ اللَّهِ رَبُّهُمَا لَإِنْ آتَيْتَنَا صَالِحًا لَنَكُنَ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he created Adam and from Adam he created his consort and when they come in intimacy you're carrying a load, your wife is carrying a load Hamlet, Hamlet, Khafifan, Famarrabi, and she doesn't even know what she's carrying. But when she found out what she's carrying, she said to Allah, Allah, oh Allah, bless me with a child that is so But when that child comes into this world, we define success according to the worldview of success. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins Surah 23 of the Quran, Al Mu'minun, not Al Muslimun, but Al Mu'minun, the believers. And he begins to define his definition of success. 
But that's not really my point at this juncture of the khutbah. I want to begin with Allah creating this insan, this human being. But what's interesting, after he defines success, Allah begins to define how he created the first human being. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ayah one, qadat ahal mu'minuna. And he's defining success. One who come to him in salah in khushu. One who protect themselves from vain talks, from vain, from vanity. One who protects their private parts. One who dispense poor. And he defining success from ayah one to ayah ten. And then what he begins with, he says, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ سُلَالَةِ الْمِنْتِينَ That he created this human being from an extract of clay. That is Surah Al-Mu'minun. Then Allah takes us to the ayah that every khatib recited before the khutbah. Surah Al-Nisa, Allah takes us to us. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ نَفْسٍ وَعْدِلًا Pointing out that every human being has a common origin from Adam a.s. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes us to Surah Al-A'raf. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَأَخَذَا رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ زُهُورِهِمْ دُرِيَتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهُمْ Alastu bi rabbikum. Alastu bi rabbikum. Allah asking us in our primordial form now. Not in the form that we're sitting here, but in the form of the ruh. In this primordial form, Allah proposed the question to each and every single soul that is created. Every ruh that is created. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alastu bi rabbikum. Am I not your Lord? And we all responded. Whether you're a Hindu today, whether you're fascist today, whether you're agnostic today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in our primordial form, we responded to him. In the affirmative, yes, you are our Lord. And we bear testimony to our answer, Ya Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the primordial form. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, going back to Surah Al-Mu'minun, after he stipulated that he created Adam alayhi salam from extract of clay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the seventh century began to tell the world where the greatest mind up until then was thinking that this insan come from the blood of our mother. That this insan come from his little miniature of us swimming in the fluid of our father. This is played to Aristotle. These are these great minds we're thinking. And here Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in 7th century is laying out detailed embryological development in the womb of our mother in 7th century that the greatest mind discovered in the 17th century. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ سُلَالَةِ الْمِنْتِينَ ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَا نُتْفَتَ فِي قَرَارِ الْمَتِينَ Subhanallah Then Allah begins ثُمَّ خَلَقْنَا And then He begins to demonstrate that He created you from this نُتْفَ and then there is this nutfa, and he using the word thumma, it's a chain. And even if you look at the ayah, ayah 12 to ayah 14, you can see a beauty in the ayah, in the Arabic itself. You can connect the nutfa with the alaka, and the alaka with the mudga. And Allah is, decided, he is, he is presenting this to mankind in the most beautiful fashion. It's a chain process that is happening in the womb of our mother. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes us back now to Surah Al-Imran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to mankind, هُوَ الَّذِي يُسَوِّلُكُمْ فِي الْأَرْحَامِ كَيْفَ يَشَاءُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمِ He is the one that fashions you, shapes you in the way he pleases, not in the way that we pleases. 
And Allah is describing this process. What's interesting is that Allah is describing this process and as soon as he finished describing this process that's happening in the arkham of our mother, he said thumma again, as if this thumma is part of this process that he will bring you to death. You will die. And then he said thumma again, then he will raise you up back in front of him, as if all of this is going to happen very quickly in front of us, or Hisab is right in front of us. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this in this insolvent form. And I want to come to a point of contention that we all see or read in the media. The power of the Quran and Kareem and how science have to catch up with the Quran. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that in this process, which the state law now Tennessee is one of them, who is saying that we cannot decide in the laboratory that bioethics alone cannot decide when this child, this fetus become a human being. They can't. Nobody, no scientist can say at the first time, at the, at the nutfa, you know what's interesting? Nutfa, alaka, mudda. If you spell it backwards, it means any and man. Just an observation. Just an observation. Bioethics cannot decide that does this fetus become a human being at the first trimester? They can't. So now the conversation by a paper published in Harvard just recently, the conversation is that do we have to go to Surah Al-Mu'minun to decide this? Do we have to go to Ayah 12 to decide that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what is happening around the 120 days is when Allah who has already created this rule in Adam and Arwa will take this rule out and put it into this fetus. And this fetus now becomes a human being. That is why many of the state law they are debating at 120 days pre insolvent that that child is just cells. But post insolvent when the soul entered to the body, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also established a few things for that child, which the ultrasound cannot see. You see, the ultrasound will see the appendages. The 3D high resolution ultrasound now, you can see the eyelashes and the eyebrow, and you can see. But what the ultrasound can see is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Al-Imran, you so will fulfill and He's the one that shapes you. Shape you what? Physically only? No, Allah decides on your agenda. This ajala is decided for you. Your death is decreed upon you when it will happen in this womb, when the soul goes into the body of that fetus. You can look at the ultrasound. When the soul enters into that fetus, there's a different glow of that cell. It's not a cell anymore. It's a human being. So just for, by just hypothetically, if you're 30 years old now, you can perhaps add six months to that because you became a human being. Technically, not at birth. You became an insan, a human being, in the womb of your mother when the soul entered into the body. But one of the 50 years of research by some of the greatest mind. One of them is Bruce Grayson, and you can Google him. He's one of the foremost experts on this near-death experience. Near-death experience. And unfortunately, this is not a topic that I can finish in 30 minutes. Because the Quran, we can go, the matrix of the Quran or the mysticism of the Quran, but what do you have to go to all these different eyes? And Allah is bringing your attention. And I pointed out to these different eyes just for you to get a grasp of what's happening. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that these experts says, Bruce Grayson, when he was a resident psychiatrist, he said a young woman came into the hospital, unconscious. 
She entered unconscious. They tried to revive her. They failed. So she went to see the person that brought this young woman in to get additional information. Why is she in this condition? So her friend, he took her into a different wing of the hospital, asking her some questions. What happened to your friend? So the friend says she overdosed, she tried to commit suicide, X, Y, and Z. They went back, they had more information. They started working on this child, and this child recovered. When this child gained consciousness, the child says to Bruce Grayson, why did you go out there and spoke to my friend? Why did you take her from the waiting room to that room in that suite, sat her down, asked her these questions, while she's in a state of unconsciousness? And then he didn't say anything to anyone because he's always thinking, this is crazy. And this is where his time began in terms of looking into this in more detail. And cases upon cases, one young man who was in respiratory failure, came in unconscious, revived him, the nurse that was tending to him, you know, they became friends, the nurse came to him on a Friday afternoon and says, listen, I'm taking the, week the weekend off, I will not be able to, another nurse will be here to take care of you. He went into respiratory failure, he went unconscious, when he regained consciousness, he said to the nurse in front of him, Nurse Anita died from a tragic car accident, just out of consciousness, unconsciousness. The nurse, how do you know that? You, you, you were staking on consciousness. He says, yes, I was here. What happened, they found out that Anita, it was her 21st birthday, her parents bought her an MG car. She decided to go for a drive. She lost control of the car. She crashed and she died. How did he know this? How do we know this? Do we need to be in the state of consciousness as we are now to understand things? Do we? Do we? Did we in Ali Mul'arwa, when Allah asked us that question, was we in body then or were we in soul? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alasu bi rabbikum, were we in body? That fetus before 120 days before the soul comes in, if that fetus is void of a soul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Insutul anam. It's just like when he was describing the process of the embryo. That tonight, when you, O Mustafa, Ya Fatima, when you go to sleep tonight, yet I will remove your soul from your body. Yet is to separate one thing from another. I will remove the soul from your body. And I know everything you did when the soul was in the body during the day. I know everything. I know the one you cheated. I know the lines you spoke to. I know after the Jumu'ah Salah that when you go back and you turn on that computer, you want to maximize your profit before the sun sets, before you leave the Friday. You want to maximize. I know. That who death is not decree upon them, he will put the soul back into the body. So you carry out this ajala, this decree that I have decreed in the womb of your mother until when you finally will return to him. You will come back to me. And then, when you stand in front of me, I will tell you everything the soul was doing. My dear beloved brothers and sisters, is now. the question is, what are we doing to prepare this soul to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is it that we do? The story of money, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, that the dust of riba will be among us. 
Look at the inside of our soul. That the banking system of the world, any bank that is controlled by a central bank, the premise, the philosophy, the financial structure is something called fractional reserve. That if you deposit a dollar, the bank now can lend ten dollars on that dollar, which they just create out of thin air nine dollars. The system itself is what Iblis says in Sultanisa that he will make this system appealing to all of us. How do we protect our nets from this type of system where we are so in debt, in culture? indoctrinated with it so much that Iblis says this is what will look very desirable to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our nafs because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concluded so Fajr by saying Ya ayyatuha nafsu mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan ma'adiyah fadukhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati Sallallahu هو الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المحيم العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله سبحان الله أما يشكون My dear beloved brothers and sisters in Islam What intrigued me just recently is looking at Surah Al-Minun and it's interesting that Allah سبحانه وتعالى goes to great length There is no other places in Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes to this great length to describe what is the definition of success for this ruh, for this nafs. I will only point out two places and we perhaps will not be able to do so before the 30 minutes is up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah al in this surah, where what he did was give the definition of success. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about how he created this insan immediately after. Then after that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins to talk about how he created this heavens and the earth and the world and the galaxy. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala go to Surah Shams. And then he gives us the signs for us and then he gives us the definition of success. He coming from all different perspectives. And it's the only time in Quran where Allah takes an oath repeatedly before he come to define what is success for his nafs. Only time. He makes oath many times in Quran. What thing you was say to? What to see me? Wahal baladil amin. La pad khalakna li insana fi ahsan tatuin. That he created you in the best form. You're not just a bunch of amino acid that comes and evolved from an ape. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never created Iblis. Think about that. Then Allah created Iblis. Then Allah created Shaitan. No, Allah created Insan and the Jinn. Iblis, Shaitan, the Jinn becomes Iblis. Iblis is Ablasa. Which is meaning that he becomes distance at the moment he evolves. You don't evolve in self, but you evolve in understanding. That is why our base foundation of an insan is to evolve to come closer to Allah in taqwa, in consciousness, not in shape, not in form. Iblis was Haritha, he was a jinn. You are a young boy in school now. Then you will become a father because you have a child. Or you're a student, you'll become a doctor and you change title. Iblis came from the jinn, the ins, and the jinn, just like how the ins evolved in that you're a good man today, you're a criminal tomorrow. Iblis a blessing is that he went astray because what? He refused the command. So he became Iblis. Shaitan, Shaitana. Iblis is a despair. Shaitan, 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 which is to go astray, distance, afar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
takes an oath in solutions, giving us the signs and give us the definition of the nafs and the hope. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa shamsi wa duhaha, wa al-qabari idha talaha. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath by complex scientific matters. That the sun is what is superior to the moon. The moon is what gets, this is what Allah is telling us. He's taking oath of pairs of things. And then everything changed. Wa shamsi, this conjunction changed. To what? Fa alhamaha, fujuraha wa taquraha. That he created this class in the state of Sakha. In the state of yin and yang, you choose. He gives you that freedom, that freedom of choice. You can choose the next ayah. You can decide today in this massage if you want to be the best of human being or you want to be the worst of human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, decide. That absolute success in this world is how we prepare this lives. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, guide us, give us the hidayah to prepare ourselves with a nafs with a room that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, please make dua for all our brothers and sisters who are suffering in all parts of the world. Our brothers and sisters in Philistine, our brothers and sisters in Kashmir, our brothers and sisters in India, our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan, in Syria, in Yemen, in Sudan, in Ethiopia, and so many parts of the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rectify the affairs of this Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala al Ibrahim inna tahmidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad. وعلى محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اللهم إنا في من هديت وعافينا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا في ما عطيت وكنا شر ما قضيت إن تقضي ولا يدع عليك نستغفرك ونتوب إليك وعلى الله يمسك